Okay, so it's the 4th of January and another package has come. This box. I'm just covering up the seller's uh, ad return address. Oh, this thing's come from Scotland, actually. Yeah. And as soon as some of you see this, a lot of you are going to go and oh, got another one. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more blank cassettes. Hooray! Actually, uh, they come in a little uh, holster this time. So that's uh, nice. This one probably keep at home, maybe. Let's have a um, look through them. And get them out. There we go. So, let's switch to manual focus. Um, yeah, that there. So, this is a Maxell UD90. Now, this is what goes way way back this is a nine bloody hell you can smell it this is a 1970s cassette yeah and to be honest um i don't know whether this will be in usable condition or not let's have a look Looks alright actually. Looks alright. Uh, this one, you know, this one, I just love the look of it, to be honest. This does look really, really nice actually with the chrome, sort of shiny silver chrome finish on it. This does have a smell to it. I don't know what it is. It almost smells like perfume. Next one, this one I'm just going to, this one's actually in a TKD case actually, this one. But this, will have some of uh, the younger ones and you bloody puzzled because of this. It's a Boots cassette. Yes, because once upon a time, uh, Boots used to sell cassettes uh, once upon a time, yeah. Uh, in fact, uh, Boots was actually once upon a time known uh, for their computers and electrical stuff, mainly in AC's books. To be honest, even in the 2000s, Boots was more, no you know, uh, I remember Boots, the downstairs part of Boots used to be just uh, all photography stuff and cameras and that, uh, even when I was uh, little. But this, mm, you know, these are actually, I think this is Probably a rebranded uh, Maxell tape. Just judging by the design of it. Yeah, because take a look at this other Maxell UR tape that I've got. We just look at them. The design of them is pretty similar. It'll probably be either Maxell or um, TKD tape. Actually, using the uh, just rebranded as uh, Boots' own brand uh, tape. But yeah, this is a 90 minute Type 1 ferric, so yeah, this should be uh, fairly decent quality. Next one in a gang scanned of black case. This one's actually a CKD, that should be in the other case actually. Um, yeah, this is just a normal Type 1 ferric. Well, TKD, you know, decent. Pretty decent quality, even their Type 1s are. So this next one, this. Now, this is an interesting one, uh, and this is the only one of these types that I've got. This, I can tell this is a very old cassette, this one. For the fact that it actually has the um, compact cassette logo. 
actually on it. You can see just there, it actually has the logo on it. The, so, this is a 120 minute tape. Now you might, some of you might be thinking, well hang on. This is a 90. This is a 120, but uh, if you put them side by side, yeah, if you put them side by side, they appear to have the same amount of tape in them. So how is this possible? Well, basically the tape is thinner in a 120 tape. So basically you get an hour on each side, but the tape itself is actually thinner, considerably thinner, to fix the tape on there. And uh, a lot of decks and manufacturers manufacturers of decks and uh, cassette players and everything uh, actually advise against using these basically because uh, these are more likely to snap or get chewed because of them being thinner and uh, it's recommended if you do use them don't fast forward or rewind just play at a regular speed but yeah I don't know, might use that one might not. now we get to some of the ones that you know um, I was actually more interested in so if we zoom out again, so this is a B B S F Chrome, yeah. This is a Chrome cassette. So this is a Type Two, and um, again, uh, B A S F. You know, it depends. Um, B S F, I, I believe, can sound good and can sound pretty shit. It just depends, uh, but. Yeah, this one looks in uh, pretty good condition, actually. Yeah, um, and I do quite like the shell on this one. But yeah, these are for, obviously, do better quality recordings. Not as good as a, what a metal tape can do, but nowhere near as expensive. Again, another one. Uh, this one exactly the same. By the looks of it, yeah, both these are 60 minute ones, so 30 minutes per side. Actually, this shell's a little bit damaged, but yeah, it holds up. This one's in a thinner case, Th the thinner shell, because this is a late, later one. This is a 1990s TKD. Nope. C -Z C D ding or C ding two, which uh, to be honest, depending on who you ask, some people say you know these aren't as good, and some people say they are incredibly underrated. And the reason is is because it says four C D, um, and it's towards the end of the era. But to be honest, these are actually, from what I've heard, I've never owned one of these, but these are supposedly really decent cassettes. Yeah. The only thing is, I don't like the. Um, case that they come in these and this one's a bit cracked as well just there um i don't like the frosted cases i prefer the clear ones uh, da, da, da. this one just a uh, type one ferric 60 minute tkd so that's standard also um for those who are wondering, the cassettes I actually sell of um, my audio productions and albums, uh, they're not recorded on these. They are actually, they are, I actually use their brand, brand new uh, Maxell cassettes uh, for these. These are just for me personally for listening to music. Again, here we go, another CD, CD-ding, or CD-ding, or whatever it, you want to call it. Type 2. Uh, chrome tape. Yeah, seems alright. And the final one, what's this one? Ah. This one actually appears to be in its correct uh, box. Again, another standard um, ferric uh, TKD. Is this a. Oh, it's obviously a 60 minute, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, I got these um, all off eBay. 
and I paid. Let's have a look, see how much I actually did pay for this. I don't think I paid a lot because I believe it was a buy it now. Um, five pound, well, four ninety five for it plus three forty eight post gig, so just under a tenner uh, for ten cassettes, which. You know, uh, considering um, about, let's see, one, two, three, four, yeah, so four of them are chrome, and uh, one of these, you know, is a 1970s one, which I just realised, uh, oh, it's had its right protect notches removed, this one. Yeah, this one's had its right protect notches removed, so what I'll do is I'll uh, put some... Uh, insulator tape over them to record onto this. I don't think any of the others did though. Um, no, I think that was only one to have its right tip notches removed. Yeah. Yeah, so to anyone who's actually ever buying a blank set, if you do buy one and it has the little notches um, here. Yeah. removed um because that basically stops you prevents you from recording on them accidentally um if you if that is the case and you do want to record on them just put a bit of tape over it and uh you should be good to go so yeah plus i also got a box for them as well that's, that's quite nice so yeah uh, uh happy days happy days and um please be praised Okay, it's the... I don't know, actually. 6th of January. So... 6th of January 2020, yeah. Got a little package here. Which is literally just tape and bubble wrap by the sounds of it. So... Like so... Let's try and open it without damaging what's inside. Notice here the word try. I haven't damaged anything so far, but you never know. Come on. Urgh. Then again, the postage on this item uh, was free, and the items themselves cost uh, a fiver. Can you guess what it is? Are you bored of them already? Yeah, that's right, it's some cassettes. These are five white blanks. Uh, they're five 90 minute ones. And, um, yeah. Unlike uh, the white ones I got previously, which were, you know, didn't have any boxes any cases or whatever you want to call them. These ones do, and interestingly these ones let's see appear to be actually a yeah they are that is odd. So rather than the much more common nowadays slim cases these have full size cases. Yeah normally they have uh, the slimmer ones but no these are full size and um apart from a few scratches on the cases which the side gigs see they would have, uh, they are fine nick um and the cassettes themselves are because I can always replace the cases. Okay well, there we go. So why do I buy these ones? Well, Basically, it's when I'm trying to make uh, some cassettes that look like official BBC ones. Or, to be honest, any ones during the 70s and early to mid 80s, because a lot of them, official releases, were in these, you know, white cassette shells. So that's why for that. Something just fell in the background. We've got another thing here. 
and uh, I'm just going to skim over this one as well because it's more cassettes yeah um, these came back in stock on Amazon a uh, pack of five well it's not really this thing the five individual ones but yeah five of uh, the Philips Ferric uh, 46 minute cassettes so yeah it's good to have another five of them again three pound with free delivery cannot argue with that Where's my knife? Oh, there we go. And the last thing. Um, yep, this is what I thought it is. It's some more cassettes, but uh, don't worry, these. These aren't blanks. In fact, they're a bit late uh, for Christmas season, but. It's Robbie Williams, the Christmas present. Only not just one version, we've got two here, and they seem to be stuck together with sellotape. Let's see if we can peel that off. I don't actually own this album, and nor was I planning to own this album. The main reason is it's a Christmas album. I did listen to it. At what I could scan of it on Spotify books. Uh, basically, Robbie Williams sells uh, these. Are actually, both actually the same album. The only difference is the colour of the cassette are different. This one's obviously red. This one's green, and there's also a blue version. And uh, basically, the thing with these, get the right way around. The thing with these is, is that um, there's supposedly exclusive to his website and he sells them at a fi five at each plus you have to pay a postage now I bought these for five pounds sixty five for both the red and the green that were selling them together um, <clears throat> which is cheaper than buying them one of them from his website I'm, I'm going to only open one and keep the other one sealed because well there's no point of um, doing the other one to be honest they're both the same album to be honest, these are going really cheap on eBay right now. They are going ridiculously cheap. I think a lot of people probably bought these thinking, oh yeah, they'll be in high demand and rare. And I guess not because no one particularly wanted this album. Especially after Christmas. And also, uh, the artwork is different for each one. Um, well, I say artwork, the colour of the background it's obviously green on this one which is the same as the vinyl and this one's red and the blue one will be blue but on this side uh, side here we've got Christmas past and Christmas future on side B And uh, Christmas Pask is basically Robbie Williams singing traditional, you know, Christmas songs um, like uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, Let It Snow, One Last Christmas, Yeah, It's Christmas, etc, etc. Et and the other side is um, original songs. There's actually quite a few, actually. So 13 uh, Christmas songs that he is singing and 11 original Christmas songs. It's not a full G out J card. Nowhere near as nice as his uh, 1990s Robbie Williams cassettes. But anyway. There we go. That's a look at your G card. And uh, actually, yeah, it is, in a th it is in the thicker cases as well. But yeah, obviously, uh, with this, no Dolby noise reduction because no one's licensing that now. But yeah, um, this set itself does feel a bit cheap, actually. Be curious what the ferret tape looks like. And there's a load of bloody leader on this. 
Actually, that ferrex here, it looks pretty decent, actually. Yeah, that, that doesn't look bad. So yeah, um, now whether they've digitally masked this or not, I don't know. Uh, just I hope they have, because then it's, you know, Digilog, technically, so... If it comes from a digital masker... I mean, it will originally come from a digital masker, but whether they've actually mastered the cassette digitally or not... <clears throat> ...will make a big difference, because if you... You know, if it comes from a digital masker, then the Dolby noise reduction isn't as noticeable, but if it comes from an old analog master, then it will be more noticeable. But yeah, I've only opened the red one, I'll just keep the green one sealed, just go with a sealed one. Yeah, um, obviously I can't play any of this, because uh, YouTube will kill me, or at least attempt to. They haven't yet, even though they're really fucking trying. Uh, yeah. I don't know, what else do I say? Robbie Williams. Okay, so we got uh, a box here. It always never looks the same size on camera as it does in real life. In real life, um, it's not a big box, to be honest. But on camera, if I hold it right up to the lens, it looks bloody enormous. I'm just trying to figure out where the best way is to cut this thing open. Uh, I think this is a flowers box or a tissue box or something. I don't know. Now, I think this is what I think it is. I know I say that so often that it's probably redundant. Because then again, I am the person who buys these, orders them. But yes, yes it is. Oh, I've been waiting to get one of these for a while. It's a Sony Walkman. Yeah, in actually pretty good condition. You might be thinking, hang on, what the hell is this on the front then? Um, yeah. And uh, this is essentially... This has a rubberized coating on here, this part. And unfortunately, over time, that does just naturally deteriorate. But the rest of it... Eh, doesn't look too bad. That button looks a little bit iffy, but the seller did see... That it was working. And wait, does this take two layers? Let me just see. Mm. We'll try it with double layers first. Uh, actually, yeah, I think it is just double layers. I was going to say, I've never seen a Walkman that takes triple layers. I have no idea whether these batteries are actually any good. Actually, um, the seller did say that it was working. Um, no, actually, let's not try it with that cassette. Let's. What one should we try it with? Hmm. The one I'm a little. Let's try it with this one, I'm not bothered about this mixtape. It could be the batteries, the batteries could just be completely dead. Um, I might have to go get some batteries that I know that are working. I 
Okay, uh, let's see if I can fix this. Alright, so I got some brand new batteries, um, which I found. Hopefully, this time will be good. And I've also plugged headphones in because sometimes Walkerings uh, have a cutout. No. Right, well, I am going to try and get my money back on this because that seller said uh, that this Walkerman was working. And it really fucking isn't. I can see there's a load of rust inside as well, but they said it was working, which is why I bought it. And it, and it really isn't. So, yeah, that is disappointing, because I did get this pretty cheap, hence the condition of it. But, yeah, I'm going to ask for my money back on this one. Alright, so this box, going to have to do it old style with this one, with the setup, uh, because the box is that big. It's not enormous, um, but it is too big for me to be sitting on my chair uh, at my desk. So let me open this up. Okay, that kind of gives it away what it is. Yeah, um, just gonna. Go. Lovely, jovely. Now, some of you might be thinking, "Hang on a minute! Didn't you already get one of these?" Yes, I did, but I bought another one because this one is actually actually came with Xbox um, so yeah this one came with Xbox and everything and also I think the buttons on the one that I have are ever so slightly yellowed I think you know um, I could technically if I wanted to probably retro bright it but they're only very slight and to be honest I'm not too fussed whereas this one at least on the pictures the buttons looked a bit whiter uh, like they do on the image but uh, basically, for anyone who is, you know, looking to get into cassettes and wants to be playing cassettes or recording them, you know, either or, this here, this is uh, the device that I would recommend that you get. I also paused the recording for a second just then, just because um, I collapsed over because my leg was... Uh, under screen of so many pins and needles it was fucking hurting like you won't believe because I was crouching down so I've gone and got myself a chair hooray so yeah um so basically why would I recommend this one well uh, we'll get into it uh, when I open it up but as you can see you know this is um, no longer being sold because it's been discontinued for quite a few years now but you know it's a much more modern device thing see something you get from the um, 80s, 70s, or even 90s. So, I'm not quite sure when this was released. So, um, somewhere in the 2000s, most likely. And actually, you know what? Um, I'll put the camera up a bit, actually, for this one. So, give me a second. It moves the other way. Okay, there we go. And now I'm going to have to do the thing where people I've had someone I've had a few people say, Can you stop doing MSMR ASMR? Um with this. Unfortunately, when I'm doing videos like this where I'm reaching over the camera like this, the microphone literally I go right up to the microphone and basically well I'm touching it essentially nearly with my lip. Uh basically there's no way to get around that, essentially. Some people say record the audio separately. Say, like, oh yeah, give myself more work to do. No thanks. If you don't like it, then uh, don't watch it. At least it's nice and clear, not muffled. 
anyway. So yeah, it's with an original box, and there are a, a fair few of these on eBay, not loads of them, but there are... You know, you can normally pick these up now for around about, I'd say, 30 to £50, pound, depending on condition. Um, the first one I got, obviously, I got a really good price. Um, I think it was £16, £17, pound, including the postage. The postage was actually a bit expensive. This one was £15 pound plus... Um, six pound post gauge so 21 quid total but again not a bad deal and this one you know comes in its original box so we've got the power cable which actually this one is a nice long power cable it is actually pretty damn long which is good because uh, you can run this off a uh, six uh, C cell batteries but it doesn't last very long on those um, as I did experience Mainly it's due to the fact that uh, of the display and also particularly if you use the mega base it really does, that does eat up uh, the battery quite a bit so let's have to grab this and the bits of cardboard drop off oh wow it's even got the original instructions manual uh, in there which actually you know what um, you know what before I should play it off well that one's got a very stiff handle have a look at the instructions menu because I'm interested in not of its operation but um, when exactly it was released. Uh, so, oh, it's also, okay. So, presumably by that copyright, it came out in 2010. Or, you know, this mall was bought here at after, so it probably came out sometime in 2010. And we've got a Prefla. Of warnings, a warranty which I'm sure is far out by now, and a oh, thank you. Shot. I think that's a yes, that's a Curry's PC World. Okay, so this was bought at Curry's PC World during well, sometime in the early 2010s when this was released. So, yeah, the so only was still making a cassette. Yeah, boombox even then. So let's have a look at this and we'll put the camera down actually for this. Oh watch it wind down. There we go. So here it is. Yes yeah, so uh the slow eject into making you think it is higher quality than it is. But uh, this one, just seeing it in the hand, appears to be darker than the one I've got already. Yeah. But so these buttons here, they appear to be coloured in. Though I don't know whether that is right or not. I don't know whether someone's coloured them in or not, because on the one I have, uh, they're not coloured in like that. So unless they just wear off, because these, the eject and the pores are clearly wearing off. But fast forward and rewind, not so much. It might be the case actually. Um, but yeah, everything else, you know, seems to be fine. I'm going to put the aerial. In place, I don't, is that the huge? But uh, I did notice the handle on this one is a bit stiffer than the one I've got. But just pressing all the buttons here, and they do have a nice click. I do notice though here. We gain focus. Come on. No. There we go. There's something uh, black around here that seems to have grip around there, and it might be pen. So I'm not sure. Regardless, what I'm going to do is uh, plug the power cable in. So, you know, it's just a kind of figure of eight, so you can swap it out with you know, power cables for most things. 
but uh, I don't know if you can see this but on here it says standby and um, I've got a CD and a cassette here which we can try these out with So let's try out um, the cassette player first because you know that's the thing I'm uh, more interested in. So what we set what mode are we in? We're in CD mode. And the operator is just your on off button. And we're gonna select tape. So the cassette drive is working fine. Let's try the CD player. And we'll switch it to CD. I can actually see the screen, but you unfortunately can't. So yeah, that the CD play on it's working perfectly fine. Good. But yeah, um, if I go back to my chair now, so I'm not kneeling on the floor. Why would I recommend people go for this boombox? You know, out of any of them, you know, why go for this one rather than go for a one? You know, either a modern day one or a retro one. Well. This is the best one for beginners for this reason for these reasons alone is that E it's stereo, it has a stereo head and plays and records in stereo. That may mean nothing to some people, but most of the modern cassette players you can get the you know, um even the more expensive ones that you can get these days, um that most of them are mono. They've got mono heads in them, so they'll only play and record in mono. Yeah, so no stereo on that, uh, on those ones, but this does have a uh, stereo HUD. Actually, the also, um, obviously you get the CD player, so you can record off a CD, which is generally the way I do most cassettes. Uh, generally, if I'm going to properly master them, I do do them from a CD, mainly just because... Well, it's digital, and I can just digitise it over and over again, or analogise it. So that's another reason why. But also, this one has a three and a half millimeter audio in. So that means you can connect your phone, your laptop, whatever. As long as it, you know, can connect through a three and a half mil um, headphone jack input, you can connect it up to this and, pl and you know, obviously just play it, but also record off it to cassette uh, using the cassette player. Obviously, some phones I know now do not quite a few phones do not have a built-in three and a half mil um, input jack, which is a problem. But you know, there are adapters and other ways, as I said. So that's another reason. And uh, also, this thing doesn't sound bad, actually. At least it doesn't if you have Mega Bass turned on. If you have it turned off, then it does sound a bit thin. Uh, basically, the Mega Bass is less of a Mega Bass and more of just turning the bass on and off. But with the Mega Bass on, it doesn't sound that bad. And also, it's not very large, actually. It's, yeah, it's... Pretty, it's pretty compact for a boombox considering you've got a top loading cassette and CD player and obviously this does have a radio as well and the auxiliary in and also uh, the price again as I mentioned you can have it normally you can get these on eBay for under £40 sometimes you know I've seen quite a few of them as buy it now for £30-35 so yeah um, not bad bad in price to be honest because obviously this um, so you might be thinking oh yeah it's great but why not just go for a retro 
cassette player or retro boombox. Well, the reason you might not want to go for that is A, you will almost definitely miss out on the auxiliary in. That is an almost definite thing that you will probably miss out on that. So, yeah, you. I mean, some do have it, some do have... Uh, the more likely you have a phono input. Or as you... Or as an American would say, RCA input, but not many of them, not many boom boxes would. But um, something you'll often find with buying old and older things is reliability. Basically, if you want something that you can just have, you know, have a play about with, have a go at, and have a feel of what it's like to, you know, play sex, record them, and that. Uh, unfortunately, going retro is actually not the way to go because, unfortunately, you will ha most likely have to do some restoration on it, essentially. Unless the seller has already, you know, restored it for you, then you are most likely going to have to replace the belts in the cassette player. And these are basically rubber belts that uh, stretch and perish over time just because, you know, they're made of rubber and that's just what rubber does, unfortunately. It does perish over time and turns to a sludgy mush. Whereas this, you know, this 2010, you know, that may be 10 years ago, but they didn't, they didn't just stop me in them in 2010. I think they, I think, because I do remember looking at these and I remember seeing reviews of these up until 2012, so I think they were making them for a good couple of years at least. And you might be thinking, well, you know, why go for that one, and why not go for uh, Sony's modern boombox, which has the cassette player function, the CD player function, and the auxiliary input, and it's about, mm, I'd say, about that much smaller. And it basically, if you cut off one of these speakers, you'd have the modern Sony boombox. Um, that you can buy today, it's available in Curry's, Argos, you name it. That normally retails for about 50 quid. That does have a stereo head in it, and so actually, you know, the stereo head, it, it's fine, sounds fine, over headphones. If you've ever seen Techmoan's video, or do what I did as well, and actually tried it out in the shop, the speakers on there sound utter, utter shit. They really do. They really do sound bad, the speakers, in the modern one. They are very, you know, tinny and flat. And uh, don't get particularly loud either. Whereas this, complete opposite with this one. It does get pretty damn loud and it can get pretty damn bassy as well. So that's why I'd recommend that one over uh, the brand new ones as well. Plus, also, uh, you might see a lot of the that uh, modern Sony one on eBay for, I've seen some of them for like 20 quid, 25 quid, however nearly all of them you find on eBay that are used uh, the CD player in them don't work yeah they, uh, that model seems to have an issue where the CD player in it just frequently breaks and true you could repair it but eh, still though, for, when you're talking those prices and you were buying used anyway, you might as well get this, so this is the one I recommend this, and you might be thinking, why the hell did you buy two of them anyway? Well basically, one, at ho one to have at home, one to have at my granny's, so I've got two of them. That's why I've got two of these. Okay. So, very you bitching and moaning, that's, that's why. And, I've made quite, I've made a few mixtapes on it, and they do sound pretty good. I've played them in various boomboxes, even my um, Technics cassette deck as well. That's hooked up to my hi-fi, so... Yeah, I went on for a bit of a long bit in this one, so... so apologies if you're bored to death of hearing about bloody cassettes, but yeah. Uh, the Sony CDF-SO5. Um, That's the one I'd uh, recommend. For people that people get who want want to get into sex and don't want, I want something that's you know a bit more reliable, uh, but you know isn't complete and utter shit. I'm not saying this is an amazing cassette player, you know. I'm not saying it's the best thing ever. No, far from it. But 
it is the best thing you can get for E, the money, and two, reliability. So, yeah. Anyway, that little bit's over. Yay. Okay, it's the 11th of uh, January. So, let's have a look at the things I've got. First thing, got some duct tape, and this is actual duct tape. You know, not cheap scrub fire, not the cheap crap, this is actually proper duct tape. So I've got some of that. Um, I've got a couple of things here from a charity shop, uh, a cancer research, and this was a, a bloody big one actually. Um, so, i got Scooby-Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf on DVD. Now, I, I still have my VHS of this. I think in the loft, but yeah, because no, it is one of those really, really cheap boxes. And I don't know what it is about that disc artwork, but yeah, just because I mean, Shaggy and Scooby look fine, but the rest of them just look a bit weird. But this is one of those really, really cheap and nasty boxes. But uh, you know. The disc is eh, not in fantastic condition, but you know, as long as it plays, and more importantly, as long as I can rip it, it'll be fine. But um, it's not a, it's not a good film. It, it's it's bad. I've always joked about this one. Actually, the joke is Scooby Doo and the Reluctant Werewolf sounds like a porno. It really does. In fact, you know what? You could easily make this into a furry porno because Shaggy turns into a, a werewolf and that title fucking hell. You, you could easily make this, you know, just by the title into a fucking porno. And believe me, you know I can bloody do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, the next two things I already have. But one I just can't find and the other one was in bad condition. Uh, the first one is uh, Best of R.E.M. CD. I do actually have this disc uh, CD. Unfortunately, um, it wasn't in very good condition. Unfortunately, so I couldn't rip all of the songs, only some of them. Robbie Williams' Tate the Crown. This one was actually brand new at the charity shop. I had to remove the uh, tape on it, but uh, this one's actually brand new. Yeah. And uh, I actually have the special edition version of that album. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I haven't a fucking clue where it is. And uh, the CDs, basically, you could buy one for a pound or two for a pound. So uh, I just thought, mm, might as well buy two. But uh, Robbie Williams was not my first pick, actually. Um, Bruno Mars's first album was actually my first pick. Because uh, my brother has Bruno Mars's first album, he got it when it actually first came out and uh, he said oh no the disc is scratched so I I saw that this char this cancer research charity shop had it brought it to the counter just opened it up just to see you know make sure the disc is clean just before you know I pay for it they didn't realise there's no fucking disc so either someone's nicked the disc or the person who gave it to the charity shop um, didn't realise there was no disc in probably um, the latter because they don't bother checking but uh, my brother you know found his original copy which is in the box is just completely destroyed this the hinges are all snapped off this but actually the disc mm, it might rip it might so yeah I just you know the Bruno Mars didn't pay for that um, I'm just borrowing it off my brother although to be honest I doubt he'll ask for it back he I think he forgot he even had it, um, to be quite frank. And then the last thing, uh, to, basically this weekend is the last weekend um, that I had to spend my HMV points. And unfortunately I didn't get, um, with HMV's point scheme, their old point scheme ends on Monday. So you got to spend them by Monday. Um, and basically, unfortunately, with the scheme, you only... Because uh, HME had a point scheme, then they got, then it sort of went dormant for ages, and then when it came back for some customers, like me, 
who were well, on the previous scheme, you only got your points from um, October. So basically, you had I didn't have a lot of points, although I still had enough to get a fiver. Yeah. Uh, I heard a lot of people were annoyed and actually didn't have enough points to get anything, but I had enough to get a fiver. Unfortunately, I was, to be honest, I was like three quarters of the way to getting a tenner's worth, but then I'd have to spend, um, I think, about £100 in order to get a tenner, so it wasn't worth it, so I just used the fiver. Anyway, I ended up paying not 6 99 for this. No, 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 no. I only paid one ninety nine for this. The Kung Fu Panda Trilogy on Blu-ray. So yeah, um, this is obviously, you know, 6 99 is a really good price to get any anyway. Um, but yeah, three, all three films on Blu-ray in a single box set. I say box set, just a standard Blu-ray case. If I can ever um, open it. I left my bloody knife downstairs. That was clever of me, wasn't it? Um this isn't gonna bloody give. Hey, here we go. There we go. So yeah, I guess your standard thing, and uh, that's annoying because it is the uh, later release discs, so you don't get the nice artwork that the original discs would have had. These are the later uh, editions where they've simplified it. Though I do prefer the front cover on this to the individual covers on the re-releases. Also, what the fuck? Just seems fucking lazy and cheap. <laughs> but yeah, um, out of uh, Kung Fu Pan, out of the Kung Fu Panda trilogy, how do I rate them? Uh, well, let's go from worst to best. So three, two, one. So there we go. That's how I rate the Kung Fu Panda trilogies from worst to best. Saying that, I still do enjoy the third one, but. Uh, the third one, I don't know, the third one kind of feels like a third act of the second film, if you know what I mean. Like, it's, it's just, it's just a bit weird, it's just kind of like, yay! But it kind of feels more like that would have been better as a, I don't know, um, a half an hour... And if I say half an hour, I do mean half an hour, not 22 minutes. An actual half an hour special or 45 minutes special rather than um, a full length uh, movie. Not saying like drags particularly, but it's just like, I don't know, it just seems less engaging. To me, it's just less engaging than uh, the first two were. But anyway, I'm happy uh, with my uh, purchases today. Holy, holy, holy. Okay, so um, I went to uh, Time Out Flea Market today and I bought this for 50p, brand new. Yeah, and it's not just one of those things that they put it in uh, new cellophane because I normally can tell with this. This does look like original um, cellophane by the looks of it. Possibly, I don't know. Actually, yeah, it is because. On the cellophane, right there, it says new cracking gift. There we go. So that's how you can tell it's the original cellophane. Also, I'm annoyed that they put this on. Enjoy on the go. Uh, yeah, great. Oh, that's interesting, okay. So this has a DVD and a Blu-ray. Hooray. Um, includes a free download. 
I don't see anything for download. Uh, unless it's rather. Yeah, that's what it'll be. It'll be one of those ones where you download the software, the D you put the DVD into your computer, and essentially you'll use the DVD as proof that, hey, you purchased this and download it that way. I've had a few that go like that, although, to be honest, I'm just going to rip the Blu-ray uh, straight out. I'm not going to bother farting about, you know, with anything else. I'm literally just going to rip the Blu-ray because then I'll get the best possible quality version um, of this. So, yeah, Alan Carse, um for 50p, can't bloody argue with that. And actually, the guy who was selling this, actually, um, he had the DVD as well, but the DVD... Um, he was selling for, I think he was selling the DVDs for, I, I think it was a pound each or one fifth, no, uh, one fifty individually, although if you bought three, they were a pound each, so three for, three for three pound or one fifty each, so, but all the Blu-rays, he basically, all of his Blu-rays he was selling for 50p each. And uh, I asked him why, he just said, oh, I couldn't get rid of them. So yeah, this guy just could not get rid of his Blu-ray discs. For whatever reason, I don't know why. But, hey, that's good news for me, because it means that I got it for 50p. I did actually see this before, and I think before then he was selling it for... Uh, I think he was selling it for 250 beforehand. Which would still be a really good price for this, actually. Yeah. He also had a copy that was unsealed as well, but... I picked the sealed one, obviously, so yeah. I'm uh, going to watch this uh, tonight and tell you if it's any good. An hour and three minutes. But with 25 minutes bonus. From 2011. Special features may not be in high definition. And I'll just stop that because it's trying to play. But I'm not going to let it. I'm just going to go straight to the ripping. I'm just going to rip this thing good. Go rip it really good, yeah. Yeah, really nice. You know how I like to rip. Rip everything. Yeah. I don't know why I made that sound weirder than it is. But it shouldn't take long since, you know, it's only got a rip. Now and a half on here to be honest most of the disc is probably just blank. I've gone on a little bit about a little bit more about this. I need to. I still need to rip this actually. Um yeah I'll probably pop them in afterwards just let them uh fully rip. And I'll put the the fans on. Just to make sure everything stays cool during it. I also uh picked up these from my uh, nana's house. They've been there for quite a while but what I'm going to need them for? Well, hopefully you lot should find out probably within the same video. Yeah. Also, remember this. This is the second one of these I got. Um, I didn't realise it's just, you know, quickly testing out, but actually the cassette player in it was running too slowly. Um, so what I did is, I basically, I took it apart and I adjusted the speed of the motor which is you know, a common problem with uh, cassette players where the motor is normally it's too fast, it's very rare you get one that plays too slowly actually normally it's the other way around but that one was actually playing just a little bit too slowly but it was some tracks it wasn't noticeable on but others um, that like had a you know a beat rhythm to it yeah you could tell on that so chance it wasn't difficult um, just took that out and I am probably going to create a test tape just to make sure I can get it to the absolute correct speed and I'll probably do that on all my other boom boxes so yeah I've created more work for myself so uh whatever and by the way it's the 12th of January when I'm recording this yay okay let's play a little game this time so I'm going to show you some of the stuff that's going to be involved in the next uh, unboxing bit. So, as ever, 
got a Pang Lang Scangly knife. Okay. We've got a speaker and an auxiliary cable. Here comes those Duracell batteries and we have a cassette tape with their Scooby-Doo and the Zombie Island Civil War on their at least in bits. I think I've recorded over bits of it actually. This was just a test tape to make sure it all fit onto one cassette. And then we have this, which I'm going to go over first actually. So this, I actually did do a separate unboxing of this, um, but uh, I don't think I'm going to keep it in. Mainly because uh, this Walkman that I got off eBay for £4 plus £2 postage, I think it was, so 6 quid total, doesn't work. Yeah. At all. It, not even the radio works. I actually asked the seller beforehand, you know, is it fully working? And they said, yes, it's fully working. The radio and the cassette player are working, and uh, both on this Walkman are not. In fact, the door is incredibly loose. You can see on here, this has just all gone away, and these sliders are pretty s stiff. Also, you can't even turn the switch for the radio on this. This on the top here. Uh, la, la, la. Come on. That switch there just will not move. Actually, we're going to have to go on manual. There we go. So, yeah, that's, that slider will just not move. There's a switch missing there. The buttons look like they're uh, almost being melted, actually, a bit. And it's a shame, because this uh, actually has uh, auto-reverse and uh, Dolby B noise reduction on it, which is a shame. The door is very loose, but, some, you know, uh, somebody might say, well, why don't you try and repair it? That's the reason there. And I did actually open up to have a look, but the motor is completely knackered. And uh, also... Also, yeah, the circuitry inside is as well. It's all corroded and rusted. So, this has been kept somewhere probably very hot and also wet. Who knows, maybe it was dropped into boiling water. But yeah, this thing uh, just does not work at all. Unfortunately, nothing I do with this will work at all. But... The same day I got it was also the same day I got my refund for it. So basically, this is now just a prop or a free paperweight. Now we come on to this. Actually, I didn't. Uh, mm, I didn't actually cut very well there because I was just looking through the viewfinder and knocked out the actual box. So I thought well I would still like a Walkman. It doesn't have to be you know a Sony Walkman, it could just be a you know personal stereo from another company. But I thought it has to be better you know it has to be a better quality. This thing is like a bloody co-op bag as well. Oh well so I'm getting a free co-op bag. Two co-op bags, another bloody co-op bag. So yeah, this thing cost me £10.50 plus £2.90 delivery. And it's this. Yeah. But not just that. It also comes with X original uh, earphones, which I will not be using. Which is a shame because these do have uh, an inline remote on them. 
which is a shame because normally on these ones uh, this bit is removable and you can just plug your own headphones in but uh, this one no I will be keeping it just because of the axe box uh, yeah unfortunately that's no good for me really so yeah we've got dull BB noise reduction also reverse and also this thing especially feeling it The front is definitely made of metal. Uh, the back the back could be plastic, but to be honest, the only wear and tear is that little line there. And the rest of it is pretty much in practically immaculate condition. I think, at least. Yeah, if we open it up, look how clean that head is and the mechanism on the inside, it just looks yeah that just looks really nice and clean so obviously let's put the tape in here now to be honest I, should, I shouldn't have bothered with those uh, batteries I think, does this use a gum stick? Well, I have to break out the screwdriver because I'm not sure where the back. Oh, okay. I see. There's an open. I think, does this have a rechargeable battery or not? There we go. So this takes one battery. I'm hoping it's a double E actually, I'm a sh out of checks. Yes, that, that'll be a double E. Had a light go off. It's going to stop that there, and you see where the speaker comes in. So I'm going to plug this into the headphone jack. And also, there's a lot, there's uh, a few I've seen uh, personal cassette players that are coming out that A are mono, unlike this, which is stereo, but also uh, ones that have Bluetooth built in. I'm just thinking, I thought the whole point of cassettes, you know, it's an analog sound. Not a Bluetooth one, but whatever. Anyway. I think, is this turned on? Yes, it is. Okay, so just gonna make sure I select the correct tape because this can actually play chrome and metal tapes as well as the type one ferrics, but this is only a ferric. We're gonna turn Dolby noise reduction off and let's play, shall we? And it now decides not to work. Are you joking? It did work for a second there, you all saw it unless it is the battery because I don't know how good those batteries are but yeah oh dear That battery could be dead. That battery could be dead, so I'm going to stop this and just see if it is the battery. So, unfortunately, 
it seems I've been scammed again and uh, this cassette player does not work at all um, well it sort of does but not really basically what's happening is is that it sounds like the belts on this thing have gone and it needs new belts and um, I did have a look and it is for this cassette player this Panasonic one it's unfortunately not an easy job it's very fiddly and also you have to desolder quite a lot of uh, contacts in this and be very gentle not to knock anything else in this which to be honest it's just not worth the bloody hassle so yeah I filed for a return um, and what I've got to do is basically just return this I've uh, sent a message to the seller as well saying that this thing did not bloody work and actually before I forget I'm going to take my battery out of it So yeah, that's a shame. Uh, not one, but two personal cassette players I've bought off eBay do not bloody work, despite them saying that they do work, unfortunately. Which is a shame, especially for this one. This one, I was less bothered about because look at the condition, but this one, I mean, look at this. It, it's in really, you know, nice condition and it didn't cost much either. But if it doesn't work, then, well, yeah. I mean, if I if the seller just let me keep this, which, you know, it doesn't look like something in the case anyway, but then I probably would open it up and at least maybe have a go at fixing it. But otherwise, you know, I want my I want my money back essentially. They can I'll, ha I'll happily uh, send this back, and uh, they can have it and probably try to sell it off to someone else no doubt, uh, maybe a spare and repair probably but yeah that is really irritating that bought this one, doesn't bloody work and I've got this one which also doesn't work but this one's a lot nicer this one is a lot nicer so yeah uh, basically they can have this you know, go send it back and uh, try and find another one maybe yeah just at this point I'm debating to myself is it even bloody worth it anymore I just wanted it as a, you know, nice little like I only got this one initially, I wasn't planning on getting any Walkmans or personal stereos at all but I just saw this one going cheap and I thought why, why not and then there's this one. So yeah, that's just really I'm just really irritated more than anything else. So this is annoying and disappointing, but oh well. Uh I'm also recording this on January um thirteenth, by the way. Same day that um it chapter two arrived, I'm recording this directly after that, so yeah. So here we are again. But before that, ah, works. Let's get this in the focus. Robbie Williams' Life Through a Lens on cassette. Why are you squeaking, Robbie? Hmm? You're not a mouse, are you? Uh, this cost me £2 with free delivery. And I'm debating whether to unfold this actually because. Bobby! Why are you screaming? Why are you crying? You're gonna wanna be out, but then immediately after two seconds you're gonna wanna be back in, aren't you? If I let you out, will you just, are you going to go out or are you going to go out and then just come straight back in? Just a second, people. Yeah, no, apparently he didn't want to be out. I literally just stood there holding the door open and he just like looked outside for about a minute. So yeah, that was uh, good, wasn't it? 
By the way, the track listing and pictures of Robbie from a long time. Time, you know, what? yes, I'm I'm unfolding it. Okay, so let's fold that back up and uh, watch me fuck up at it. Oh no, did I get it? Yeah. The problem with these things is I never bloody get them right. Mm, that's about right, isn't it? This important part. Will it go back in with the cassette? Yes. Okay, so that one I did properly. Anyway, this is the main thing. So, yes, it's another personal or portable cassette player. I'm trying to figure out where to open this. Um, but will this one be any good? This looks like a Maplin box, almost. Hang on. I think this is a box from Maplin. Possibly. Oh, wait. With some orange. They're not original headphones, I don't think. I don't know why he sent them. <laughs> Whoever wants to use earphones. But anyway. Here it is. Now, this one was twelve ninety nine, and I and the seller said the only thing wrong with it is uh, the radio and the screen doesn't work. But uh, that's all need to do with the radio for tuning it uh, and the clock. But the cassette player in it is supposedly good. Yeah, just taking a look at the mechanism. A little bit rustic, rustic, rusted there. And um, guess who forgot to bring the batteries? So, um, give us a second, I'll go get them. I got the batteries. Okay. I think I don't need to X2. Yes, it does. There's a diagram on the side of the box showing that it only takes two. You see that LCD is not working great. Here's uh, one of my test cassettes. And we're just going to turn on the speaker. This one actually has um, two headphone outs. Ooh. And I'll just check so. Yes, one Dolby noise reduction off. And uh, yes, this is normal tape. Also, this device also has um, auto reverse. Okay, so uh, that what you get. So clearly, this one's working. So hurry for that. Um, this one's probably the biggest and thickest and also heaviest one out of the lot out of all the portable cassette players that I've uh, got. I still haven't sent the Panasonic one back for my refund. 
But uh, yeah, it works and that was a little uh, bit from um, Scooby-Doo and the Zombie Island Civil War, my unofficial sequel to Scooby-Doo and on Zombie Island because the official sequel, you know, was complete horseshit. So let's turn the Dolby. I turned it on to radio then. Let's turn Dolby noise reduction on. Great. Here we've got a direction control. So we can go in the other direction. Actually, the other direction, so I have nothing on, as it? it goes at the end of the tape for the other direction, but yeah. Overall, this thing is actually uh, pretty good, and it's, from the speaker, it does sound pretty decent. I'm just going to look at it myself. Yeah, um... So it does have a graphics equaliser here. No, to be honest, it's one of those features where I'm just never going to use it, probably. But yeah, it looks good, it sounds, coming for the speaker, pretty good, and uh, two, heck from Jackson X. Which is, uh, hmm, pretty good. Um, the only reason I think I'd use this is if I was using this for digitising something, though, to be honest, I might at some point, I don't know. To be honest, um, whenever I am, though I probably won't to be honest, when I am digitising cassettes, um, I tend to, uh, how do you turn this off? Because the display is just continuously on. And that's going to eat up the battery. Oh no, even with the battery out, it's still on. Must be one of the things that's because it's broken. But I think you heard the radio working there for a second. So maybe it is the guy did see the display is working and he didn't think the radio was working, but I'm never going to use the radio. But yeah, 12 99 with free delivery. Uh, this thing isn't bad with... It may be a bit chunkier, but, you know, it has... Auto reverse, Dolby B noise reduction, and it's GVC, so yeah, it's not bad, and it it does feel pretty solid actually. It feels more solid uh, than the Sony Walkmans of this year actually. It does feel pretty damn solid. So yeah, that's so yeah, finally, and it does have a hyper bass, which I'm guessing is just uh, like Sony's mega bass. Yeah. Okay, so that that one is just for the hyper bass. Generally, they shouldn't be called mega basses or anything like that. They should be called. Do you want some bass, or do you not want bass at all? But this one actually has a a, sl a slider for it. Okay, I actually quite like this thing. So yay. That one was actually worth the money. Finally, third time is apparently a charm. Okay, so uh, I bought a few things today. Uh, got not much. First of all, some adhesive hooks from uh, Poundland because unfortunately, um, with any adhesive hook, uh, if it gets too warm in the room, like it is right now, unfortunately the weight of whatever the hook is holding up is enough to soften the adhesive or melt it enough to basically make it fall off the wall so I've got some more them anyway they don't do the smaller 3M one at the pound shop anymore I haven't seen any of them I don't know why anyway got a couple of other things from uh, Poundland Spider-Man 2 on Blu-ray yeah. And it is uh, sealed in shrink in cellophane. 
So whether this is... I don't know whether... Mm, this actually might be new. Possibly. It might be. I don't know. If it is used, then it's in remarkably good condition, because normally used ones, these are always bashed up. And that, but this one is um, in remarkably good condition, and it even has a sticker on it. But yeah, which include the topic says includes both the theatrical and extended versions of the film. Hooray! Um, I do not. Ow, that hurts my thumb. Uh, again, I do not own this on Blu-ray, but um, is this thing in date? Twenty twelve. Okay, um, I'm going to show this code. I have no idea whether or not that code is in date or not. I'm guessing not because the copyright says 2012. Um, but yeah, if you, if anyone does want to try it, then there you go. There's your free copy of Spider-Man 2. You can tell this is some 2012 because they're going on about um, 3D Blu-ray because you know that was a thing in there oh look oh wow that's that's the um, 20 gig PS3 that they're using on there that was a bit weird to be using that in 2012 but yeah they're going on about um, 3D Blu-ray releases and whatnot. Or die. Or die. So yeah, um, yeah, probably just. I normally do keep these um, little things that are included, mainly because in years to come it's like a little nostalgic look. And there's the disc, and behind there we can see some artwork of uh, Doc Ock fighting S Spider Man on the train. That's nice. So yeah, um, no doubt I will be ripping this. But yeah, uh, this probably... Hang on. Yeah, I think this is new, actually. I don't think this is pre-owned, despite the sticker, because... It has that brand, it has that um, smell, if you know what I mean, that plastic smell of um, when you've, you know, just opened a Blu-ray or DVD, it has that, you know, sort of fresh plastic smell. And this has that. So yeah, this thing might be brand new, actually. And for some reason, I only found it at uh, the Cromington, um Pound Land. Anyway, I've got two albums as well, and these are ones I have previously owned. Well, my dad owned that. Don't know what happened to the disc. I owned that. I don't know what happened to the disc either. But yeah, uh, this one's Justin Timberlake. Uh, his first album, Justified. I can already tell that like, someone has not put uh, the sleeving properly. Come on. Come on. But I shall be ripping this. Come on. There we go. Oh yeah, yeah. I forget this. Wow. Oh. This is... Okay, I thought there used to be a booklet in this, but no, this is just a single sheet, but you can see there the damage on where someone did not put it in properly. I probably should have paid better attention because they did have two copies, but I was in a bit of a rush. But if the CD's alright. Mmm, bit of dust. Well, that should... That should rip okay. And 
Hog Fire. I can't remember if this was their first or second album. I know it's one of their few. I can't really remember any of the tracks from here, apart from the first track, Suburban Nights. It's pretty much the only track I can uh, actually remember from this album. But uh, this one, very hipstery seeing no cover. Oh! Uh, 10% off Music Magpie. The other one, the Grisson Timberlake, didn't have that. Let's put that aside, I've got loads of them. Yeah, that CD's fine. Uh, okay, so, whoa, this is a big foldy out thing. Um, and on the other side it's just yellow, apart from some copy information at the end. Okay. Um, yeah. Great! Hippity happity hell happities. But obviously, um, you know, these were a pound each, that was two pound. Not bad! Oh, and also just something to mention, um, when I did go out today to go... You know, I was just going out. Um, I actually uh, was listening to some cassettes. Um, on my personal cassette play, I actually listened to the entirety of Robbie Williams' Life Through a Lens and um, one of my 90 minute mixcapes. Yeah. So, hooray for that. Okay, so uh, I just had a day out in that uh, with my granny and um, she bought me this from uh, Poundland. It's, Hog it's Hogfire's first album, um, Stars of CCTV. 11 tracks, okay. This, unfortunately, one is, uh, the box for this is a bit damaged, unfortunately, was the, um, only one that they had. So there's a slight, um, hairline crack just there on the box, by catching the light. A couple of cracks there on the back. And actually, sounds like there's bits, ooh. Okay, they're not affecting the disc, but if you look here, there's a bit of plastic in there. However, if the disc is all right, ooh, okay, is that just dust? Should be alright, actually. Let's just see if it rips. I need to get um, a 4K friendly Blu ray drive. Um, I have seen some, uh, the cheapest one is an Asus one. Um, cheapest I've seen it is on eBuy of £46.95, I think. Isn't bad, but you know, it's still a fair bit of money. Yeah, I will probably get that at some point, or if I see a deal for it somewhere. Because, um, yeah. Because there's a list of only so many 4K friendly Blu-ray drives. And what I mean by that is, is that um, the official 4K Blu-ray drives that have a 4K, Blu -ray, 4K UHD Blu-ray logo on, you can only play 4K Blu-rays on there. You can't rip them. So yeah, you want a, a one that's unofficially compatible. Let's have a look at the book collection, shall we? This is a plastic lined booklet as well. So uh, 
laminated look. This album I've um, never owned and I can't remember if I've ever listened to it or not. I honestly can't remember. But uh, I can see that on my laptop that it's ripping perfectly fine. So, yay hunky dory. Yeah, they do have a third album um, which came out in 2011 with it's got some skulls on the front and I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, that an album for nearly t for nearly a decade. Woo! And to be honest, I mean, <coughs> if we take a look at these two, like. <laughs> This one, no cover art, that, you know, uh, and then this one, a security camera, yeah. I mean, there's basic, and then there's just like, like this, this, this looks like something that should be on a hipstery t-shirt, and this thing kind of looks like a warning symbol for a security camera. Yeah, I just, it's cause, I just find that a bit weird, to be honest. I also got a pineapple. And a mango from uh, Marxies. Because they won offer. And I like them. And also. A mozzarella and tomato wrap from Boots. And a two litre bottle of Pepsi Max. So, um, yeah, overall, not a bad day.